All right, here we're going to look at layer styles and After Effects and the different things that we could do with them. And the good thing about them is they're very similar to our Photoshop layer styles. They're actually exactly the same. There might be a few, uh, you'll notice that there are some things we could change and do a little bit differently here in After Effects because there's more, everything we can actually animate. So what I've done here, I've already set up all my layer styles, but that's just to show you quickly how we do it. You create anything. It could be a shape layer. It could be a text layer. So here I've already created shape layer. So let me actually just grab a text layer. And I'm just going to type in something here. Hello, my friend. Now, I don't have anything on it, so I have to add some color to it. Just anything. Go to my character panel. Add some colors. Make it red for now. There's hello, my friend. And with anything selected, and I always seem to spell that wrong. Uh, with anything selected, any shape like this, I can actually just either go to layer and layer styles. And I could select any one of these. Drop shadow, inner shadow, outer glow, inner glow, bevel and boss, satin, cover overlay, gradient overlay, stroke. It's very similar to all the Photoshop ones we have as well. And so let's just for now just say drop shadow. And there it is. I have my drop shadow. Now if I look down here and I, un I twirl this down and I see it'll show up as layer styles. I'll see layer styles. Now the blending options are there just like in Photoshop when we have them. They show up and we could change our global light. Uh, even more advanced blending options as well, which is great. But we're just going to look at actually the actual drop shadow here. So we look at the drop shadow, a bunch of different options here. So that's what I'm mainly going to look at. So let's just shut that off. Now let's start with the drop shadow one here. Okay, drop shadow. So what can we do? What I'm gonna, I'm just gonna quickly go through them, and then I'm just gonna animate something small in it, and we'll go from there. So I look at the drop shadow, the blend mode. Of course, you could change the color, you could change opacity. So if I want to change how much of that I see, uh, you know, uh, we could actually look at different angles and distance and spread. A lot of different things here. So let's even just say, now let's play around with the spread. So at this point in my CTI, I'm gonna bring it down, and I'll make my spread. I'm gonna make my distance uh, zero. And let's say my spread is zero zero, which is fine. And then a little bit later, I'm going to say I want that to be um, a little bit more. There's my spread. Oh, sorry, my I didn't want my distance. My spread. There it is. And let's say uh, not my spread. My size. There we go. My size is none. And then my size. I'll bring up, move it a little bit, and I'll bring my size bigger. But my spread does have to go down to zero. Okay, there we go. So there's my there's my animation. If I play that, that's how it animates. So you can kind of create something interesting there. A lot of different options with drop shadow, which is really cool. So you could definitely play around with that. My inner shadow, same idea. Twirl down layer styles. Look at my inner shadow. And remember, blending options is a part of all of them. So I can play around with my inner shadow. So here's my inner shadow. And now what I can do, I can once again play around with the opacity of it, how much of it, which right now for 100%, like I just wanted you to see what I'm doing. And I can play around with, um, let's see what the choke does. Not too much size. Let's bring that in. There we go. That's what we'll animate. Cool. So CTI is at zero. Bring it up a little bit. And I'm going to bring that choke up. There we go. Well, let's see what happens there. There we go. There's my animation. All right. Pretty cool. So that is our inner shadow. Now, if we continue on, we'll go to our outer glow. So what does the outer glow do? Same idea, but this time it's uh, because it's on a white background. I should probably change the color to something else. Uh, let's change it to an actual color. Let's go there. Okay. So now what we could do is we can play around with the gradient smoothness, how smooth that gradient is. Uh, let's go with the spread. Let's see what the spread does. Not too much. Oh, actually, sorry, the spread. It's once again that size. I always have an issue with that. If I change the spread up, then it makes it a little bit tighter. That's right. Okay. Which is kind of don't want that. But not that I'm actually making anything in particular here. So, Outer Glow is actually very similar to Drop Shadow. Uh, but we can obviously diffuse it in a very specific way. Uh, change up the opacity as well. So, really, realistically, it's very similar. Um, the jitter we could play around with. Oh, that's actually kind of interesting too. Uh, and the range. Yeah, there's a little bit more interest we could add to the outer glow, uh, but all in all, let's actually just animate this with the size again. Actually, you know, I'll do an opacity maybe. I'll bring it down to zero. Let's animate it, and I'll bring it up to 100. And there's our next animation. All right. Okay, so that's that one there, Outer Glow. Like I said, a lot of differences there. Uh, sorry, a few more differences there than Drop Shadow, but still pretty interesting. Inner Glow here, same idea. It's going to be hard to see, so I'm just going to change the color up here. Okay, 
Um, and then I can play around with the same idea. I have a lot of options here. Opacity, noise, the type of color, a single color. I could use a, use a gradient. That's pretty cool. The change of the gradient smoothness if I wanted to. Um, let's play around with that size. Let's see what we could do there with the size. Very subtle because it's on screen. If I wanted to change screen to something else, I could. But that is the, over, the uh, blending mode that they gave us. So let's just keep it. It's very subtle. But even let me change up this a little bit more if I wanted to. But once again, doesn't really do too much because it's still on screen. If I did change it to potentially the darken, that'll do it for me too. And which is going to be very similar to our inner shadow. So inner shadow, inner glow, outer glow, and drop shadow are, have their similarities. But once again, let me see what these ones do. You know, let me do this one. I'll animate this one here. So I'll bring my CTI back to the beginning. I'll stopwatch on the choke. And I'll add more choke. There's my animation there kind of interesting okay there we go so that was our inner glow now let's check out our bevel emboss I'm not a huge fan of bevel emboss but it does offer some interesting features so let's take a look at that a lot more different options here style technique depth direction uh, so you know what we will go with uh, first our initial one to make sure we could really tell what's going on uh, the direction up and down uh, we could play around with let's go with our uh, oh we got options of our highlights and our shadows that's pretty cool uh, our direction, our depth, let's see what our depth could be. So we can even add even more depth or less. Now some of these actually, the percentages can go really, really high, but they actually don't, don't go much farther than really what they can allow. Uh, or you can't do too much here. Uh, inner, bevel, uh, inner bevel, outer bevel, emboss. So we can even do a little bit of embossing, just like I said, just like in Photoshop, very similar to those options as well. Um, and let's see what the size we can do here. Yeah, let's actually change that to inner. There we go. And change up that size. And that's kind of something we can get there. Like I said, not a huge fan. We could totally soften that out. Kind of make it a little bit better. And remember, when you're scrubbing, if you hold down shift, the increments increase quite exponentially. If you hold down command, the increments go very, very slow. You, you could slowly do it, which is kind of nice. Um, and that's it. That's kind of how we'll play with that. We could change the angle up a little bit. It's not showing much here just because probably what I have already in terms of um, my particular angle or my softness. Uh, I could change up the highlight. Uh, let me actually change up the shadow because the shadow opacities, that's what we currently have on. So actually, you know what? Let's animate that just for fun. I'll bring that down. I'll animate the shadow opacity because that's probably what's going to happen. It's at 0% and then I'll bring it up to 100%. There we go. Okay, a quick little animation there. Nothing fancy. Just playing around, just to show you all the different things that can happen here. Satin, I don't use a lot of satin either, but let's play around, see all the different things we can do. Let's bring it down. So automatically this will be added. Uh, you can change up the blending mode, of course, but this is the default one that it's given you that usually probably makes it satin or makes that particular layer, um, layer style do what it wants to do. Uh, the opacity. Let's see what that does. Play around with that a little bit. Uh, the angle, we could play with the angle a little bit, how it's actually going to flow there, the distance. We could bring that down. Like I said, not a huge fan of satin. I'm sure it has its particular uses, but I'm, uh, maybe that'll play with that one there. That's pretty cool. So I'll just play with that. And we could invert the satin. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Okay. So let's actually play with that. And the opacity there we go and we will I'll do the size I will animate the size so click on the size and there is my uh, I'll bring it up there we go it seems very very subtle but it does something and sometimes we can have very subtle animations and that can be a very interesting thing to do as well color overlay obviously you could change the color of this to any color you want I already have my circle here and it's a you know no stroke white fill I could change that but then I could also add another um, color overlay to it and I could play around with that right here layer styles and I could color overlay and just play around quite simply with that uh, we already know that it has a white underneath it so let's pretend actually this particular circle did not have a white uh, fill it was something else let's just change it to blue okay and so I know blues underneath it but there is a layer style over top of it which is red so actually let's just change up the opacity of that so let's animate that opacity is on 100% then I'll bring it down to 0% and it'll just do that blue underneath 
That's it. Actually, that's a really nice animation because it actually blends them as we go, which is really interesting, actually. That's very nice. I like that. Okay. Next one here is actually what I want to show you really quickly too is something interesting here instead of having a full out animation where you actually want things to change in between and have after effects make those changes for you you could actually select your keyframes and say I don't want a full out change in between I just want something to go from one thing to another so and the way to do that is to right click on your keyframes and go to keyframe interpolation and now instead of linear just go to hold and what it does it just saves the information here 100% Sorry, 100% here, it'll save it. And here, it'll say 0%. And that's it. It's just going to flick from one to another. So if I just scroll through, it just changes. So that's a pretty cool way to animate as well, where you're saying, you know, I don't want any tweening in between. I just want you to go from here to here, but over time. And that's another way to do that too. So you could actually, once again, right click, keyframe interpolation. If I want to go back, instead of hold, I'll just go to linear, and then it'll bring it back to linear. And now I have my normal keyframes and it just does that over time. Just to show you another way to animate those keyframes. Uh, gradient overlay, same idea, but there is a lot more when it comes to gradients. So you could actually change your gradient. So let's take a look at this one here. So even let's look at that. So the blending mode's fine, opacity. Let's edit the gradient. Let's play around with this. So just like our normal gradient uh, toolbar here, we could actually change that. The top ones are our transparencies, are the bottom bars are the bottom stops we should call them stops are the colors so let's just click on that and make it a different color cool and let's click on this one and make that a different color maybe a subtle gradient there okay well here's another great thing i could do i could change up the style so i can make it radial if i want to make it radial or and if i want to reverse it i could reverse it very similar options but now we have a few more options which is kind of cool because we can animate them a little bit better the gradient smoothness we can see how that gradient smooths out we could also play around with the scale of that. So really kind of have a little bit more of a smoothness to it. And now the offset, here's we our X and Y. We could offset this if we want to. We could move it around, which is pretty cool. And let's animate that, because that could be pretty interesting. Let's get that back to zero. So I'm just going to bring that back to, there we are. I'm going to click on my offsets. I say nothing. Actually, uh, you know, I'll click on my offset to bring it over here to get rid of it all together. And then I will scrub it to the other side. There we go. Now it's just kind of doing something like that. If I wanted to loop that, I could. That's kind of interesting. It's just kind of going from one side to another. That's a pretty interesting thing we can do as well. And our last one here is stroke. So I'll click on stroke. And you know what? I got a lot of red going on here. So let me click on that color of the stroke. And I'll add just a different color altogether. There we go. That's fine. Okay, and now once again, the size, we can play around with the size. I assume we can make it pretty massive, but it only will go so far. See how I make it bigger and bigger, but it still only remains there. So you can only go so far with it. So then we'll bring that back. All right, there we go. Uh, the opacity, of course, we're familiar with, and the position, and that's it. So let's see what that position would be inside outside center so if i want um the position of the stroke to be on the outside it's currently on the outside that's by default if i want to come on the inside that's the inside and then the center if it just stays on the center that's pretty cool too we could animate the um let's animate the opacity i'll just bring it back the cti definitely at zero and then i will uh, make this opacity zero and then i'll move the cti bring it up new keyframe and there we go nothing special there just a nice little all right so a lot of uh, a lot of different things happening here and this is how all our layer styles work you could add them to almost anything uh text and to uh, shapes uh, i believe you could add them to pictures as well if they bring in you could add layer styles there as well so just to show you all the different things you could do and the best thing about it if you click on some of these you take a look you could add uh, you could almost animate almost anything in that particular layer style which is really cool it gives you a lot of options there so i hope this helps